doing a startup here on a brand new system and suction pressure is a little bit low. Yeah, it's pretty warm outside, you know, 80 degrees, inside 75. So first thing I want to check is the airflow. I'm still putting the unit in obviously. But uh, there's a couple ways to check airflow. You can check static pressures or you can use some nifty tools here. These are great for vents. But I wanted to show this tool. By field police, which is the heated wire ananometer, and it'll actually calculate CFM. As a rule, you want to get them on straight ducts. They're much more accurate. If you tried to use the heated wire on a turn down there, it's going to be way off. You get it on a vertical, this is the return, you know, going down. I would love to get it there, but I got a water heater blocking me. I could measure up here, but I got two ducts meeting each other, and there's going to be a lot of turbulence right in there. So I'm just going to measure it on a straight piece on a supply duct. Now I already drilled three holes. This is a two and a half ton, so I'm going to be looking for a thousand CFM of airflow. Let's see what we got. Yeah. So basically I set up a timed average. The total was 32 seconds. I ran the probe all the way through, all three holes. And it added up to an average of 1,000 CFM exactly. So our airflow is good. So let's check the uh, subcooling to check the refrigerant charge. So we're 260, 259. Go to our table. So about yeah, 86 degrees. And then with our fluke, 76. So that's 10 degree subcooling. Refrigerant charge is fine. So now let's check the distribution of refrigerant flow. As you can see here, we have six circuits on three evaporator coils. And basically you check the temperatures of your outlets, which gives you the superheat on your individual coils. The thermal scan is pretty good for this. So we got one circuit overfeeding. You can see right there. you're never going to have these things exactly the same. It would be nice to actually see the coils a little better. I can almost see superheat at the top there. But yeah, it's blocked off so much. Can't really see that good. So let's go to, this is the thermal couple, a very thin ribbon thermal couple. Much more accurate. So I can't I can check uh, these three like so okay so we got 51 on the left coil forty on the one that's overfeeding and fifty three. So the expansion valve is pinching back because of the one overfeed. So that's all explaining our lower suction pressure. So that coil is going to be full. And I got a little bit of superheat on the right coil. I'm feeling it with my hand. So the first thing you want to do when you have a circuit imbalance 
is just make sure there's not an instruction manual blocking one of the coils. And uh, so this one you can pop off the plate, look inside, the coil is clear. So what I'm going to do is manually balance this coil. Because I just got one coil overfeeding and it's this tube right here. So I have a uh, special tool here. So as I'm pinching, I'm watching the temperature of that circuit. You can see here, it had to pinch down quite a bit. You look at it from the side, and then I had to pinch it in the middle right there. And uh, now we have balanced uh, circuits. So we have 45, the middle one's 45, the back circuit is 46, the last circuit 44, remember we had a 10 degree difference, and you look on the thermal, Still overfeeding a little bit, but you can see this circuit's also overfeeding a little bit where you couldn't even see that before. And the suction pressure went up. You can see on the tube header, much more even. You're never going to get these circuits exact. And the temperature difference between, you know, like here's 49. 46. It just the uh, thermal's not that accurate. Uh, I have to do a disclaimer. Don't do this. I'm just nitpicking this system, you know, increasing a capacity 5%. It's probably all that did is raise me up 5%. And uh, what happens, this circuit was overfeeding and it was causing the other circuits to pinch back because of the expansion valve bulb. And so I was running a little bit low on the other coils, a little high on the overfeeding circuit. I just uh, wanted to address that a little bit low suction pressure. Now one other thing I wanted to mention is low refrigerant level can also make the circuits uh, uneven, particularly when the distributors are horizontal. You get a little more liquid on the bottom of the distributor and a little more gas on the top. And uh, the better practice to have vertical distributors, but they don't really care about that type on uh, residential. And um, and so, uh, so if you ever were to see that, please don't do the balancing like I did. That's going way too far check a refrigerant level first and, uh, and then check for blockages and airflow issues on the individual coils. I hope you like watching the video. Thanks for watching.